So I'm not really sure where to get started with um, 2011, so I'm just going to jump in on something that's probably a little bit too complicated. But it's sort of what I find more interesting. So we'll see how much stuff we can show in this one tutorial. So the guys over at Design Reform did um, a series of tutorials showing how to make this kind of structure in uh, Digital Project, Katia, and uh, Inventor. And uh, the basic idea is that you've got this frame element, sort of L-shaped thing, that tracks in an orderly manner along a set of guidelines. So it always maintains a sort of perpendicular relationship here, orthogonal, I guess. And then it has this flexible relationship here in the middle. And this is something that was sort of difficult to achieve in Revit before. I'm going to show you something about how you might go about doing it now. So I've got those same kind of tracking lines, that sort of guideline rig that they were using to have the frame move along. And I'm going to go and open up a new kind of family type that we've got. So I'm going to new, new conceptual mass. And conceptual mass now has like a little friend in here in the adaptive component. Friendly little friend. So we're going to open that up. And there's a little nod to Bob Ross. Um, I'm going to drop down some points. One, two, three, four, five. Just to coincide with those lines that I had, the framework lines. And each one of these guys is going to eventually attach to those lines and uh, be able to sort of flex the geometry with it. So I'm going to select all of them and I'm going to hit this Make Adaptive. And what that basically means is that now all of these points are going to be able to orient to certain sort of contextual, contextual cues within the environment that I load them into. And to make this a little bit more uh, complicated. I'm going to just go in and select the ones that sort of rock and roll on those lines that are wiggling through space. And I'm going to change it over in here in the uh, properties. We have point and point uh, placement point in here. Now there's two different kinds of adaptive points. You can get placement points and shape handle points. Placement points are going to be I'm going to be prompted to use them when I place them in the project environment shape handle points are going to basically work like shape handles that you have in a regular family environment. I'm going to turn all those guys into shape handles. You saw all their numbers disappeared. Um, I won't really get into too much about the numbering. That will come up later on. But what I'm going to do is uh, now I'm going to start building up my framework for my frame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing placing points on work planes of other points. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. Grab my points, my set work plane tool, pick, place, pick, place, pick, place, and pick, and place. Now each one of those points is now hosted on the work plane of another point. Oh, I think that one over in this direction. And this is all part of my needing to create a framework for that is orthogonal in the project environment. So you can see that my points move with the points that they're hosted on. Yeah. And I'm going to connect all these guys up to each other. Select two points that I want to connect, and I'm going to hit spline by points. I just get a nice little straight line through them. I'm going to walk around and just make a bunch of lines here. Yeah, this is too complicated for a first video, but what the hell? We'll jump in feet first. and these two guys. And now what I'm starting to build up is you can see my my basic L-shaped framework starting to sort of accumulate here. Now what I have here is I have <coughs> two lines that sort of overextend from each other. What I really want is I want that place where they intersect with each other. 
So this line is creating an orthogonal relationship going straight up, basically. Well, it will be straight up when I load it into the project. And what I want to do is I just want to have it intersect with this one. So I'm going to put a point here. I'm going to select that point, and I'm going to host point by intersection. And that's going to host right there on that line. So that now when I, when either one of these guys moves around, it moves with it. So you can see my orthogonal relationship getting built up there. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Drop a point. Select it. Host point by intersection. I pick the line that I want it to be orthogonal to. And I'm actually going to, just going to go and I'm going to pick all of my... I did these as model lines, but they should probably be... They can either be reference lines, or I just want to make sure that they don't show up. Eh. Damn tab order. I'm just going to select all of them. and Actually, the way that this properties palette works now is really nice. Now I can go and I can pick all of my lines. And I'm just going to call them all reference lines. And I don't want anything to snap to them when I'm in the project, so I'm just going to call them not a reference. How's that for intuitive? Reference lines that are not references. So now I've got a bunch of reference lines. And I'm going to make my frame, basically. So I'm going to do 3D snapping. And I'm going to walk around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To all of my points with my model line geometry. And, you know, you can't really see it right here unless I go and uh, hide, uh, hide category. Now you can see my framework there. Now I'm going to load this sucker back into my project environment. And now you can see I've got my framework sort of live on my cursor now. And my active work plane is level one. I can just place this thing all over the place. It's not really very interesting. Um, but if I select it, you can see that now I've got all of these points. Well, those are my shape handle points. If I just select them, they work like regular points. You can see that uh, they've got this sort of little tripod here to move them around. And, you know, some things have orthogonal relationships and some things don't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach all of these guys to this framework. I'm just going to stop the video here and start up again in a minute.